If you've looked at some of my other videos, you've noticed that I typically end them with, if you're not learning, you're not having fun. Well, what a better way to have fun than to pick up some old equipment. Uh, this name tag that we're looking at here, Cincinnati Bickman Tool Company, is a Camelback drill from around 1920, best I can tell. There's no documentation other than one sales brochure that I found that comes anywhere close to uh, matching it. So uh, about to learn, or let me put it this way, I have been learning with this and having a lot of fun. It is a big drill press weighing in at around uh, 2,200 pounds from what they say, and it stands about nine and a half feet tall. Uh, it's camelback. It's got the, a 16-foot belt on it uh, that we'll look at a little bit later. But when I got it, it was all uh, frozen, all rusted and stuff, and I had to break it apart and clean it up. And I've broken it apart, cleaned it up, and got it basically running. It's got four clutches, uh, two clutches to engage the back gear or the uh, standard drive, uh, another two clutches for forward and reverse on the spindle. Uh, we'll look at a few more things on it here. Um, again, there I couldn't find any documentation. If anybody has any documentation on this, uh, I'd be happy to see it. Uh, we'll go from there, but we're having fun. This has a fast and a slow feed rate that you can select like 27 thousandths per revolution or 9 thousandths per revolution. 18 thousandths per revolution or 6 thousandths per revolution, 39 thousand or 13 thousand per revolution. And each one of these has a fast or a slow associated with it. That's the two separate numbers. And the fast and the slow is set over here with this guy. It looks like about eight screws holding the cover on it. And so we're going to open it up and see what it looks like on the inside. A little bit of moisture got in there sometime. I'm not sure. You know, this is, there's no gasket or anything associated with this, so I'm not really sure how this is, or what's, you know, I guess it's just a, a hard seal machine surface to um, to seal it up, but moisture did get in it. There is some rust in it and stuff, and we'll see here in a minute. This pin, uh, let's get it in frame. This pin here holds this in place, this mechanism straight. So, and it looks like there's oil holes here that oil this guy. This is kind of a, I guess, a neat mechanism. I can get it to work right. It has a screw in here. I'm not really sure what that actually does. We'll hopefully find out here in a minute. But uh, it, oh, I guess it meshes with this control here to down feed that into there and at this point we've got gangs of gear and I guess the the mechanism that actually drives from the revolutions is down here there is a um, a shaft that connects to here that feeds power into this and then it, the shifting mechanism and stuff, some of it's under here. And then you have different selections of gears. These are fixed on the shaft. Those are fixed. I guess they're pressed on. I hadn't investigated. There may be a pin or something down in here. We might look for that a little later.
but now you can see these gears roll freely because they're not not against anything over here and then this as you turn it in locks a particular gear to the shaft so that one's free this one's locked and that one's free and if we go all the way this one is locked free and free so there is a mechanism down in here that locks these gears individually this whole gang comes out like this and if we look on the end of that there is slots keyholes for like a woodruff key down in there and apparently well, there's a spacer in there but apparently yeah, there is you can see them on each one of those there's a spacer on that guy but you can see where a key can engage that and there is a slot and if we turn this guy we can see a woodruff key sliding down through there and there is a detent in in the handle up here but you can see the woodruff key sliding back and forth and there is a detent in here so let's and A little dirty, a little rusty, but there's a spring here that keeps that woodruff key pushed up, and then this handle slides it to the different position. Like I said, the detent is in here. Here's our power input that comes for the comes with the revolutions of the quill. And if we look down in here, this gear is free. And this gear is free. They're not attached to that right now. This guy in the middle is attached to the shaft. I just found a mystery piece down in there. And I bet this has to do with changing from high to low. Looks like it's come loose. Looks like it might fit into this guy and slip him one way or the other. We'll have to look a little closer and see what we got. Finish taking the screw out. Okay. Looks like it fits into a channel okay, it does and there's our shifting mechanism there's the stop for that grub screw looks like that piece fell off quite some time ago because it's kind of dirty so. stop for the grub screw. This is 
offset so that it rotates So here's the mechanism that actually shifts into the high or low. The, remember the, the revolutions of the quill feed into here. This, this gear is loose and this gear is loose and there's a slip, I guess clutch is what you call it here and it has teeth that mesh. So if you shift it this way it's going to mesh with the lower part if you shift it up this way, it's going to mess with the big gear. So we have a little gear and a big gear to give us the high and the low fast and slow speeds. And this brass piece fits down in this groove on the other side to shift it up and down when you rotate this guy. So, well, that's apparently how it works. And somebody could have loosened that grub screw and this could have dropped off in there. Somebody could have been me. I don't, I don't recall doing it, but it's, it's entirely possible. Now the big question is, how is all this lubricated? Is there supposed to be oil in this? Or what? This thing sets straight up and down like that on the drill so there is kind of a cavity in here down in the bottom but it would seems like it would be leaking out through these guys if you had an oil bath in there so I don't know that's a question I've got to get an answer to see what see what people recommend as a way of greasing or oiling this If you're not learning, you're not having fun.